Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I want to go over NSLOOKUP. And NSLOOKUP is a DNS query utility that can be used in Windows, Linux, and Macs. And um, pretty much it's a way for you to interact with the DNS server or servers for you to find a specific information. So let me do NS um, lookup right here and then we're going to type up for instance cnn.com and what that's going to do is going to do this Th and this is something that you have to keep in mind first of all it's going to this what you see here is the d the name of the dns server your computer your computer in this case my computer is registered with and this is the ip address of the dns the dns server that i'm registered with at this moment and this is my ISP, it's a publicly available DNS server for my ISP. So something to keep in mind is that when you use NSLOOKUP by default, it is gonna query the DNS server your system is associated with, and it's gonna be the first DNS server that your computer is associated with. So that's something to keep in mind because if we're gonna be doing this type of um, assessment or if we're gonna be doing this type of queries in an internal network, make sure that your device, your computer, is associated to the DNS server of that internal network. Most of the time, as you know, that's part of DHCP, so you don't have to worry about it, but that's something to keep in mind. Now, let's go over the results right here. Non-authoritative answer means that this server that is providing the answer does not own the DNS zone that is providing the information on, right? So that's what it means. So this is the name of the uh, domain. And these are the IP addresses that are associated to that DNS name. As you could see, we have IPv6 and IPv4, and we have multiple addresses for load balancing purposes, as you can imagine. That is CNN.com, it's a huge domain, but you know, if you have a simple network or even an advanced network within your organization, you may have maybe a handful of DNS servers depending on the configuration that you have. Now let's move on to a, a more practical example. Uh, let me uh, remove this. Let's say that you would like to find out information about a specific DNS records in that DNS zone, right? Let's say that you would like to see what is the MX record? And in that case, the MX record is the name, is the records that is gonna be pointing to the mail server within one specific zone. So what you would do is NSLOOKUP, of course, and then you would do type equals, and you have to specify the type of the record you are looking for. Now, if you wanna do MX, you do that, and then you type the domain that you're looking for, cnn.com, and that's gonna resolve the uh, the uh, MX records to the uh, mail servers, as you could see right here. This is the IP addresses and, and the priority for that, for, for those servers, and not the IP addresses, I'm sorry, I should say the names. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. So let's say that you would like to find out the uh, TXT records, right? So the, which is another type of DNS record. You come right here and you do TXT. And that's gonna provide a lot of information because like almost pretty much anything, I'm exaggerating of course, requires a TXT record. So every time that you're gonna connect a new service or something, they'll ask you to uh, add a TXT record to your DNS. So, so as you could see, uh, this is one of the many ways that you could do, uh, that you could use NSLOOKUP to interact with the DNS zones and obtain information. The other thing that is super useful is that, as I mentioned before, you can specify um, a DNS server to query, right? In, in, in my case, as you saw before, when I do this command by default, it's gonna be my DNS server configured in this computer, but you can specify a DNS server if you know the IP address of the DNS server. So let me use one of uh, Google's public IP um, DNS, as I believe is, for that two, that two, that two. So I'm gonna be doing, uh, I'm gonna be querying uh, the DNS server. I want information about 
CNN.com, but I don't want the system or NSLOOKUP to default to my own configured um, DNS server, but I want NSLOOKUP to query this DNS server. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to hit enter, and the information, to be honest, should be the same information, the results I'm saying. So the results are going to be the same, but in this case, I am specifying that I want to query for that two, that two, that two, and not use the default settings of the command. And lastly, if you feel like you want to get more information about your target, you could do a debug, right? So you could come here. Let me uh, get this out of here, and I'm going to do minus uh, debug, and um, you're going to get a lot of information about your uh, DNS, uh, the DNS server, about the domain on the DNS server that you specified. And this is something that you would use for replication purposes to see if there's any problem, especially when you are migrating, um, when you are migrating DNS servers for your domain. If you have domains and publicly available domains and you want to host it on a different server, uh, you, most of the time you're going to have to uh, register to the new DNS. So to keep track of that, to see what's happening in the background, you could use DNS lookup. So I hope this information was useful. Uh, NS lookup is one of those commands, networking commands, that you, if you are in cybersecurity or if you're a system administration or network administrator, this is one of those things that you must know. And just keep it in the back of your of your mind, right? Like, you know, if, you, if you're looking for DNS information, if you're looking for a specific um, uh, record types, that's the command that you would like to use. If you are preparing for a test, a networking test, or, or let's say CEH, this is something that you have to know, right? You have to know your different DNS records. You have to know how to find them. And the command is super simple. It's not... I mean, it's not that complicated. So I hope this information was useful to you. If you found it useful, all I ask you to do is just click on the like button, subscribe to the channel if you want, and if you know of anyone who can benefit from this information, feel free to forward this information over to them and also take a look at the other videos that I have on the channel. They may be useful to you in your career in cybersecurity or system administration. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you on the next video.